So what I've got here then is a uh, recent eBay purchase. It's um, a cantenna from the company Danettes who made that uh, little Yagi antenna that I looked at probably uh, 12 months ago now. And uh, it's called a turbo tenor, just like the Yagi is called a turbo tenor. But uh, it is a cantenna. It's a uh, 11N Pro wireless booster antenna. And it claims a whopping 18 dBi. So that claim of 18 dBi is one of the reasons why I uh, purchased this. I think I paid about £26 for this free shipping from uh, China, but uh, there's a lot of sellers, uh, resellers selling these on eBay. And uh, the price goes from, you know, around £26 up to uh, £60. And uh, there's not that many companies that uh, actually sell a cantenna. So as I say, there's not that many sellers that uh, actually produce and sell a uh, cantenna. There's another guy in America that uh, I would really like to get hold of one of his cantennas to take a look at, but the shipping for uh, one of his cantennas to, over to me in the UK, he wants something like $60 just to ship the thing. So it's just, you know, it's not really worth that to bring it over here just so I can have a quick look at it. But uh, a lot of other sellers also sell Cantenna kits and, uh, you know, they've got a lot of negative feedback on the, the sellers that do actually sell the kits because all you're really buying is the uh, end connector and a length of copper tubing to make your driven element and you have to find your own cam. So as for the dimensions, this is uh, 300 millimeters long, but I'm not sure how much of that is foam because it's got this foam end cap that's uh, glued on here. And uh, the cantenna itself has a diameter of 85 millimeters. Now, if you compare that to my cantenna here, uh, my cantenna is a uh, little bit shorter, uh, probably around 270 millimeters long. And uh, mine's also got slightly uh, wider diameter, 90 millimeters diameter. Now this uses a uh, end connector so you can connect to this and uh, I don't like that. 90% uh, of the uh, consumer grade uh, Wi-Fi stuff that you buy nowadays are all SMA. Not many people use end connectors now. The only uh, place you see you end connectors used in uh, volume when it comes to Wi-Fi is uh, the professional market and uh, believe you me uh, a professional installation wouldn't include one of these in there and uh, the reason why they tend to use end connectors is because uh, especially for a long run they use uh, LMR 400 which is really really thick coax and you need a uh, end connector for that but um, you can see here also they've riveted it onto this so I'm not sure if this is uh, aluminium or stainless steel and uh, they've actually squashed the uh, cantenna there getting that on so a little bit messy and uh, a little bit uh, looks like it's been thrown together if you ask me and uh, also to uh, connect this to uh, the tripod which is uh, this tripod here they've uh, got some kind of threading on the inside of the cantenna there and just drill the hole through there again it looks uh, a little bit messy uh, it looks like it's been hand drilled and not done on the uh, machine for instance and if we take a quick look at mine, this is how I got around the uh, problem of uh, attaching a uh, tripod to this. I use these uh, three angle brackets as I showed you in the original video on how to make one of these. It's just uh, a much neater way of uh, getting that tripod mount on there. And uh, as I said, the SMA connector is really the way to go. 90% of the products nowadays for the home market come with uh, SMA connectors and not end connector type connectors so if you wanted to use this then you would have to buy separately a uh, pigtail with an end connector on to sma connector or purchase an adapter to uh, screw onto this and then screw something like your uh, alpha card or whatever card you use that's got a uh, sma connector output on there so again you know that's just something else you've got to uh, go out there and purchase in order to use this and again, it's just uh, an attention to detail thing. It's something that, uh, you know, always catches my eye. Uh, the reason being is, uh, you know, when I design things, I like symmetry. And this is the way that the cantenna sits when it's on its tripod. And you can see here, they've just slapped the sticker on there. They haven't lined it up 
making sure that it's nice and neat and uniform along the line of the cantenna when it's upright on the tripod so just a little bit messy and uh, can't be bothered there and for the end cap they've used this foam construction here where they've probably uh, laser cut this they've laser cut the circle out here and uh, this band that goes around here to tidy it up so they've stuck that to the band and then the band over the top of the cantenna so before we uh, open this up so we can have a look what's on the uh, inside I thought it would be useful to just give it a quick test side by side with my cantenna just to see uh, how much a uh, 18 dbi cantenna outperforms my 11 dbi just to see if there's any big differences there so i've got both of them with uh, identical alpha cards and i'm testing them side by side as you can see so let's give it a quick scan then and see how well they perform so i've got mine on the right and the uh, turbo tenor on the left so we'll just let them load up seem to be very similar at the moment I'll just let them settle down so what I'm going to do now is pick on a uh, couple of uh, identical access points and show them on the graph so we can see how well each perform so very similar then um, the uh, turbo tenor is a little bit weaker it's dropped out a couple of times and it's kind of hovering around the 65 percent mark where uh, mine is solid and it's just over the uh, 70 percent mark so here's the uh, plus net access point that seems to be really strong on the turbo tenor so the turbo tenor is above 100 percent on that one where mine's hovering around uh, 94% so we'll take a look at this torque torque one here and it's a little bit further away this one mine has dropped out a couple of times but it seems to be really stable at uh, around the 75% mark where the turbo tenor has dropped out a few times and it seems to be hovering uh, around 47% uh, 48% mark so here's an access point torque torque one so we compare them both so mine is around 76% uh, there and the turbo tenor is uh, just under 60 percent so both of them side by side there so you can pause the video and have a look for yourself but uh, to be honest with you i think they're both very very similar as i say mine's 11 dbi in gain they're claiming that this one is 18 dbi in gain and uh, to be quite honest with you i think they're uh, surprisingly similar and uh, I think on some of them as well mine's actually got it beat so I'm going to take that 18 dBi with a pinch of salt so let's take a look inside then so what I'm going to do is remove this uh, foam end cap here so it just looks like the uh, main structure is glued together the foam ring here is glued here and this uh, circle glued on top but uh, I think it's just held in place around the cantenna using some double sided tape so I should just be able to peel it off the uh, cantenna itself so inside then it's just uh, typical of a uh, cantenna not a lot going on at all we've got the main driven element down there sticking through at the uh, end there and uh, the hole where the uh, threads are for the uh, uh, little tripod looks as if there's some uh, kind of tape or something just to stop probably dust or something coming through into the uh, cantenna so what I'm going to do is uh, drill out these uh, rivets here because they are rivets drill them out and then I can remove this uh, end connector and we can measure the uh, length of the driven element and uh, the length of the driven element that I use for my particular dimensions of cantenna which is uh, just slightly shorter than this one and just slightly wider in the diameter than this one is uh, 30.5 
millimeters so i'll be interested to see uh, how long this uh, driven element is so now that i'm taking a closer look at this that's not uh, tape that's covering the uh, thread for the tripod it is actually some kind of epoxy uh, you know glue that's uh, gunked in there and uh, the problem with that is because this is a metal surface and it's uh, nice and smooth epoxy doesn't uh, adhere well to something like that even if you rough it up a little bit with some uh, you know uh, glass paper then uh, it will eventually fail so that's definitely a failure point for the tripod mount so now that I've got the end connector out of here you can see how it's uh, connected up we've got the four holes here and the large hole to take uh, the end connector and uh, when it's in position it is quite flush to the side wall of the can but uh, just using my eyes this uh, driven element does look to be a little bit too long for 2.4 gigahertz so here's the driven element then so we're going to measure it and we need to measure the solder cup as well so if i put it up against the ruler you can see there it's coming in at just under 33 millimeters around 32.5 millimeters long and that's way too long the uh, optimum uh, measurement the length for the main driven element on a cantenna tends to be around 30.5 millimeters 30.1 millimeters at a push for it to stay resonant at the frequency we will want so this driven element is way too long and i'm just wondering whether they uh, measured off the driven element the piece of copper wire there prior to soldering it into the solder cup i don't know so I've trimmed the driven element back to 30.5 millimeters, which is the uh, same length that I use in my cantenas. So I thought what we could do is uh, rivet this back in place, put it all back together again, give it a second test because looking at the footage after I shot that test, my cantenna did seem to uh, outperform this one. So uh, we'll do another test then with the modified driven element and see how well it performs next to my cantenna. So setup is just the same as the previous test, identical alpha cards, got them both side by side. So let's give them a quick scan and see how well they perform next to each other now. So again, mine is on the right and the turbo tenor is on the left. Let's let them load up and settle down. Well, I'm going through these, and to be perfectly honest with you, they look identical. The signal strengths that they're picking up on each one of those access points are identical from what I can see. So the turbo tenor is now working that little bit better now. I've shaved that two millimeters off the driven element, so I can't tell any real difference between these two. So it's certainly changing the length of that uh, driven element has certainly improved the uh, turbo tenor. So I've just gone over that second test footage again and I can't see any difference between uh, the turbo tenor now and uh, my can tenor here. So after we modified that driven element then we certainly improved things uh, quite a bit with this. I've uh, gone back and I've super glued that uh, end down a lot better but uh, the uh, tripod mount here that uh, you know is just epoxied in place that is definitely going to fail especially if you live in a uh, hot country uh, get a little bit of heat in there and uh, that epoxy will fail it will come away from the side wall of the cantenna so to sum up then as far as giving it a uh, thumbs up I'll have to give this probably a uh, thumbs down i mean it's by danettes the uh, little yagi antenna that uh, i looked at uh, you know probably eight months ago now the construction of that was really really nice i mean it didn't perform anywhere near of the uh, db that uh, danettes said it did but uh, overall it was a nice little yagi antenna if, especially if you could get one uh, you know cheap or uh, it's a second user item the uh, £90 that some sellers are asking for that was a little bit too extortionate. But this, again, the construction is nowhere near as good as that little Yagi antenna. 
and there are sellers on eBay uh, you know trying to get as much money as they can for one of these up to 60 pounds but if you find one for you know say 20 pounds 25 pounds then uh, yeah get one uh, expect to modify it I do know in some countries uh, it's pretty hard to get hold of uh, one of these toilet brush uh, holders that I make mine out of for instance so if you can't get hold of one of these then yeah buy one of these and just modify it and just keep in mind that uh, the uh, the uh, tripod mount here will fail eventually it won't last forever so I hope you enjoyed this uh, little video it's uh, just something I've shot I came back from holiday uh, this morning and it's Sunday afternoon now and uh, this was here waiting for me so you know I couldn't really resist opening it up and see how well you know it was put together and everything but uh, the uh, cantena that I've got here the one that I've made is being shipped off to uh, Sweden uh, tomorrow morning but this one uh, I will pop this on the uh, Patreon page and I will be giving this away to one of the Patreons at the end of the month. So hopefully you've enjoyed the video and if you see one of these for sale I've made your mind up whether to uh, get one or not. Definitely don't pay over £30 for one, it's really not worth it, the construction is poor. But uh, if you did enjoy it please give it a thumbs up, questions or comments below and hopefully you'll join me on the next one.